one from Evenstar, just with a quick surprise live, another one in my series of One Thing I Know. And I wanted to talk a little bit more today about something that I covered in my last session, which was talking about hormone disruption. And in that um, piece, I was specifically talking about fragrances and synthetic fragrances and in particular a chemical that is in synthetic fragrances called phthalates and how this can be a big problem with disrupting the actions of our hormones. Um, so I just wanted to take that a little bit of a step further today and talk about another big problem that surrounds us everywhere which is plastics and um, something that I think we all need to be a bit more aware of because they can have a huge impact on our overall well-being. Now again as with phthalates in synthetic fragrances many um, plastics or pretty much all plastics contain substances and chemicals that can be hormone disrupting. Now before I go any further with talking about what that is, well, what, what am I talking about as far as um, what is hormone disruption? Clearly it means um, changing the way that our hormones work from how they should work for our ideal health to something other than that. So there's a few things. So it might be that the production of the hormone is stopped or lessened. Could be that the utilization of the hormones within your body becomes less effective. It could mean that generalized inflammation occurs because your hormones aren't acting as they should in good health. Um, some chemicals actually mimic the action of hormones. So the body thinks it's dealing with the, the natural hormones that it's producing itself, but in fact, it's dealing with synthetic chemicals that are, take, that are absorbed into the body in what you eat, in what you breathe, in what you put on your skin. And then the last thing is with hormone disruption, it can mean that when we have excess hormones, the body needs to detoxify from those, needs to process them and rid itself of those excess hormones. And when we are subjected to a hormone disrupting chemical, that can mean that that detoxification may not occur. So with plastics, and here we're um, particularly talking about hard plastics, but in some soft plastics as well, they contain many different chemicals. And one of the key problem ones is BPA. A lot of people have probably heard of this. You'll see um, lots of, you know, the plastic containers, drink bottles in supermarkets nowadays, which will have big labels saying BPA free which is good. There is, however, some concern about the chemicals that are often being used in the production of these plastics to replace the BPA still being problematic and potentially being hormone disrupting. So really my key message today is to try to reduce how much you use plastics overall. So um, with the uh, hormone disruption, a lot of the key symptoms that can occur, just so you can be aware of some things that maybe have been niggling away at you for a while and you really can't put your finger on what it is that has changed. So some key symptoms are weight gain now, and also inability to lose weight. Now, the number of clients I have, especially those in middle age, who come to me saying, look, I just can't shift this weight that I've put on over the last few years. And one of the key things is toxins in your surroundings to consider those. And one of the big ones there is plastics. Um, so it does especially impact on estrogen production. So it you know, can therefore be especially important for women to take this into consideration. So your body is constantly detoxifying um, and it certainly does that very well. No, no health practitioner would argue with that. But the problem is when we're constantly exposed to things, then the levels of them does build up. Your body can only detoxify from a certain amount of what it um, registers as toxins. And once it's unable to um, keep up with, with what it's exposed to, then it can't get rid of them and it will store those toxins. One of the key places that toxins get stored in the body is within fat. So in actual fact, we can 
put um, create more fat cells to store more toxins. So this is a really big problem these days. So um, I guess the other important thing then is, well, what do you do instead of using plastics? So I, the most important ones to be aware of, if you look at the little um, symbol, the little triangle symbol on the bottom of all plastics, they'll have a number in them. The ones to really avoid are number three, number six and number seven. Then um, the next step, I guess, is, well, if you need to keep using plastics, things to be aware of are they're especially um, liable to re release the chemicals that they're made with when they're exposed to heat. So if you're using plastics to, um, to put hot things in, so especially here we're talking about food, then it's really a big no-no. You need to wait until the food's completely cooled down to put the put inside a plastic container. The other thing with storing things in plastic is that if it if anything is stored in plastic for a period of time, then the chemicals are going to be released into what is being stored. So the key here is don't store anything in plastic that's going to be in there for kind of more than a day or so. Not not a um, not an exact measurement there, but really any long-term storage, you don't want to be doing it in plastic. You want to be doing it in glass or in um, stainless steel, any any hard substance, ceramic, um, that is not going to be leaching chemicals into your food. So again, back to the heat. So um, not putting hot foods into plastic and also not definitely not putting things in the microwave in plastics. So that's really not a good idea at all. Um, what were the other things I was going to say? Oh, and acids. So really um, highly acid or highly alkaline substances are especially going to react with the plastic. So don't store these kinds of things in plastics in particular. Um, and yeah, so they're the case things. So being aware that Unfortunately, in Australia, um, we still have some chemicals in use in plastic production, which have been banned in other countries. Um, and so really, you know, the best, the best step to take is to avoid using plastics as much as possible. The other thing, obviously, is the environmental, the, the planetary health perspective that um, if we're using less plastic, then we don't have that to contend with it at the other end of its life. Especially again here in Australia, we're really not very good at recycling things yet. So a lot of this stuff is not being put to good use um, and it's creating um, a lack of health uh, in our world environment. So um, plastics certainly are very convenient and light. And so if you, you know, wanting something to um, take take your uh, lunch into work or to school and it's not going to be in there for very long then sure you know it's not you're not going to be at the worst risk of harm from a short-term storage in plastic but wherever possible gradually just trying to um, stop using plastics as much as perhaps you are now because you are putting yourself at risk of exposure to those toxins which can have long-term and serious health impacts for you. If you'd like any more information, please feel free to contact me and I hope that has been useful. Have a great day and be well. Bye now.